Welcome to Rhinos and Aliens. I don't remember. Bro, I have the memory of a fucking goldfish lately. Hitting solves everything. Violence is literally the answer to everything. <laughs> I'm going to have to get new mics. Yo, but it's been, what, four years now? Going on five. That's fucking crazy. Dude, when I think about it, we started technically March of 2017. That's crazy because it feels like this is like a year and a half in. Well, cr- depending on how you look at it, Corona doesn't even feel like it. that. 2020 doesn't feel like a year. Yeah. That's probably why like it feels less for me because it's like it skipped out a whole year for me. Yeah. But um, is it already recorded? My oh, we're live. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, I think it's also because I'm not here as often as all the other guys, right? Like as for how many times you guys record. I've been here for like... 20 episodes maybe total well to be fair the first two years especially the first year you were actually pretty frequent yeah but then it dropped off with work and then once corona happened that was just yeah but that's why i've told you to write down what i told you in the book because yeah you want one boner for me (laughs) check (laughs) i'm receiving communications from who the wifey's mother. Oh. Uh, sure, he wants me to do something for her, but not right now. <laughs> so here's why Donovan Mitchell was the most impactful player. I'm just playing. So how are we segueing off into this? Okay, well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, rhinos and aliens. Yeah. Well, technically, aliens and rhinos, if we're going in order. Ladies and gentlemen, aliens and rhinos. Aliens are the females. Because the rhinos are the dicks. (laughs) Got it. It's been a while. It's been that long. Because I remember the original concept for the logo. Oh, you do? The dick fucking horn and the pussy... uh, Mouth. Yeah. 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 Damn, it's been that long. Yo, but bro, you know what's so funny? If you go on the internet still to this day... From a name perspective and from an image perspective, nothing is even close. Isn't that creative growth? Well, creative, uh, like name and and image design, when nobody has anything similar to what you have. Isn't that the whole purpose of creating an IP? Yeah, something unique and... Yo, I don't know if you've noticed, though, recently or ever since Corona... All these podcasts have been popping up lately, and the names for the podcast are either generic or trash. Yeah. I've seen one podcast name. Legit, the podcast name is What's Up, Everybody. Wow. <laughs> that was actually my podcast, so <laughs> thanks for exposing me like that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this, where it's like the name really, if you... Unless you really dive deep into what the name means, like no one would ever think, like, what the fuck is this podcast about? Well, what do you always say? Your favorite musicians, specifically hip hop and and rappers, are they're the ones where their lyrics and their songs have more than one meaning. It's yeah. double, triple layered. Yeah, uh, I re- I'll never forget this. You switched me from being a two chains hater. To at least respect in 2 chains, because you went through a list of songs and different lyrics from each song and saying, yo, bro, it has my most, my, my favorite rap line, I think, of all time, <laughs> is Black on 28, that remind me of February. <laughs> that shit is so fucking layered, and for those of you that don't know, look it up, it's it's a B.O.B. song uh, featuring 2 chains. Uh, I forgot the fucking name of it. But that, that's the song that always pops up in my head when I think about 2 Chains or I think about somebody. What, like, what's so crazy, too, is it's not like 2 Chains is truly lyrical, but compared to most artists nowadays, he looks like a Lil Wayne. Yeah, because you know what? It, it, like, his, his shit, like, superficially is not, like, super intricate or whatever. But when you were, like, that line, like, Black on, tw- Black on 28, that remind me of February, right? Like, there's so many fucking layers to that. But that's where his, co- I, I believe that's where his college comes in. I'm yeah. not saying you have to have college background to make lyrics like that, because look at Eminem. But yeah. you could tell he has knowledge. Yeah. 
Because yeah. if you don't have knowledge, you're not yeah. spitting. You, yeah, you're just like, what the fuck? 28 February, black? I don't. What, what are you talking about? You wouldn't even be able to think about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You're just thinking about, oh, you're talking about the rims, but I don't get the rest of the little reference. <laughs> I don't get the rest of the reference. <laughs> I remember my mind was blown the first time I heard that because I was like, the news in my family. No, but when, I remember that day because it was in a car ride. I, I believe we were going to Timmy's to get an ice cap and stuff. And when you were going through it, I was, yo, I have to pay respect. He he actually puts time. You could tell he puts time. Yeah. And then he he has a nice beat selection. He just doesn't. Yeah. His dick's so hard. He need he can't go through a metal detector. <laughs> 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 what is that line? That's from a Drake song. It's like. Um, yeah. Where did that pop up? There was a line. He's a, he has a line in the line where it's like uh, something about his dick being so hard he can't go through a metal detector. He has a lot of funny ones. They might not make sense, but they're just funny as shit. I would say that makes sense though. Yeah, but that's just that's. I think that's more funny than anything. No, it is. Yeah, and I'm sure that's what he was going for. Just funny. <laughs> is that a koala? It's a bear. <laughs> so I guess I mean you're kind of right. It is a bear. <laughs> koala. <laughs> is that a koala? Fuck you. What what episode? What what show is this? <laughs> After dark. What? After dark. After dark. Is that a koala? It's where I have a black T-shirt on. It's like 38 minutes. After dark, there's 47 videos. Okay. And the most recent one was 47. Okay. okay. Quick math, quick math. <laughs> Welcome, rhinos and aliens. The show where we start at the back <laughs> and, end, and, and end with the intros. <laughs> Gentlemen and ladies, welcome to... Rhinos and Aliens After Dark, number 48. Today, we are going to discuss... What's Why Francis is wrong. <laughs> about the NBA playoffs. This isn't our overall NBA season in review. We're just... It's been a hot minute since we put, posted the episode for After Dark. And Bro, these playoffs have been so fucking crazy. I just can't wait to dive deep in them. Okay. Well, or a shallow dive. You know, I'm not a pro diver, but... My name is Francis Mandrala, or as Danielle likes to say, Nature Boy. And in front of me, we have Michael Report. <laughs> it's, it's Sebastian. My name's Sebastian. What's your nickname? We're, we're coming up with one. <laughs> Sebby Webby. <laughs> Seb the, the web. <laughs> Seb on the web, because we're on the internet. Let's get real. Have have you noticed just like women I notice women. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, in culture how it's just I'm not something's going on. I'm not as attracted to them. It is Pride Month, bro. Come on, let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Penetration also solves everything. <laughs> I guess to be fair, to give five years out of thirty dollar mics, it's not bad. Were they thirty? Yeah, because the whole package with the boom arms Jeez. were, were uh, forty five with tax. I'd say that's fucking worth it. That's good bang for your buck. <laughs> yeah, right. You better demand some money for this free ad. <laughs> Promoted by Amazon. <laughs> what company is this? Newer. What, yours is different though, right? Yeah, this one's Flo- Florian? Yeah. Yeah, if I said that right, I want money. <laughs> if I didn't, I want a shout out. <laughs> At least. <laughs> no, 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 no. Send me no. some swag. <laughs> uh, if the audience doesn't know, you've been with your lover for how many years now? Consecutively, not counting the past Yeah, history. yeah, I think we're going on six. Holy shit. Five or six? And then it's well over a decade when you account for everything all together. Oh, yeah. I've known her for like 16 years. Yeah. Yeah. But, yo, bro, it's just like, it, it's so weird. It's it's one of those, you ever heard the quote, too much or or, or, or not, of no, not enough is actually just enough? Yeah. I've never heard it, but I think I know what you're talking about. Where it's like, because you don't oversaturate something, it it it. it, it Holds more value yes. to a degree, yeah. and also it holds more imagination. And uh, what's the saying? Uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder, bro. We talk about that all the time because when we first started, like 
dating or like hooking up or whatever the beginning was, we would only see each other every few weekends and then it become it became more frequent. But at the most, it was only on the weekends. So yeah. we had five weekdays in between to not see each other. And I always thought that was great because it, you, you look forward to seeing that person and you cherish that time you spend with them even more. Now, obviously, being Amen. together and having been married and everything... And now because of the coronavirus having to be separated, like for the past 15 months, we've seen each other three and a half times. Because mm-hmm. when she came out, she only came out for a week. Uh, I think it was, def- and I've talked to clients who have told me, I was like, man, this is like a blessing in disguise for you guys. Because this is either like. Going to break you or make you. Yeah. And I think it definitely made us. Cause I t- and, and for her, it's a little bit harder because I think it's just. She's more emotional driven than, than just. Uh, Logical? Logical, right. Logical okay. driven. Where to me, as I was like, well, we're, we're good. We're together. We're, we're not a young relationship where we have to worry about like, yo, this is going to break us. At least not for me, right? Um, where she's more like, oh, we just got married. We barely spent time together. I'm like, you got to look at this long term. Like, we are so good for the future. Like, imagine two years from now, for some reason, one of us needs to take off for a week for work. You know what a week compared to 15 months is? Like, that's nothing. Like, I'd be like, yo, fuck off for a month. Like, I'll miss you, but this is not, I'm not worried about like what it's going to do to us. Hypothetically speaking. Hypo- yeah, because of what we've been through already. Like, to be- sh- everything we've gone through has made us stronger. At least I would hope that it has. And, and to be fair, she, she is a woman, so y- you would assume she would be more emotional in this. And I was going to say that, but I didn't want to say that, but I'm glad you <laughs> said it. But yeah. Bro, we have well, a. Well, they do tend to be more emotionally driven. Bro, me and you have a whole episode about this. And Rhinos and Aliens as a company consistently dives in and out of this. It's 2021, bro. We woke. <laughs> we woke. <laughs> but yeah. We're going to save that for Roz because I want to really... Remember to wake up. But is it in the old time one? Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to put hashtag. <laughs> That's even... <laughs> hashtag woke. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Doing this right yeah. Yo you know what I consistently think about bro And I still have the The saved screenshots From it This is a desk That Nathaniel wanted to make And we were trying to figure out a pattern for the legs That's neither here or there <laughs> That's just I just found it because this is where he drew it Okay go on You remember the most recent time I actually visited you In Canada this was years ago. Dude, it's going close to five years. Fuck. I was still in beginning of a cop. Yo. Were we even doing rosin? Yo. I don't think I think this was pre Rhinos and Aliens. Not only that, bro, I think I wasn't even in college. I don't think so. Cause you spent a couple of days there. If I was, I just got into college. Cause I wasn't in my twenties. It would probably would have been in the summer. Cause I remember you never wore a shirt. Not that that means anything, because you never wear a shirt. Yo, bro, has it been over six years? It's been at least five. <sighs> bro. The, the the point that I'm trying to say is, you remember that one fake girl on Twitter? But I still got the screenshots. What are you saying? I can pull them up right now. <laughs> so do, so. Do. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I ain't got no time. <laughs> Dude. Bad bitches is the only thing that I like. You know what's so crazy, bro? That's the same people who made Black Beetle. Yeah. Bro, Race Remmerd is actually one of the newer rappers that I actually appreciate. Not because they're super Wait. lyrical, but they're actually but fucking th- catchy. Didn't they separate, though? I don't know that they separated, but I know Sway Lee has become like the hook god. Like, if you need a hook and you need bro, a hit, he's, like, he's that's where you go. His voice is so iconic. Unique. Yes. Yeah, like you hear it and you're like, that's Race Rammer. I and mean, that's Sway Lee. It's like, you know what I compare him to, to a lesser degree? Nate Dogg. Mm. You knew Nate Dogg the moment you heard him, and he was on big hits. If you needed a hook and you needed your song to be a hit, dude, it's so sad. Back what then, happened that, was, to him. that was him. I miss him. Yeah, he reincarnated into Sway Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, seriously, well, we're going to save that for, for a, a Roz episode. Let's get into the playoffs. I'm here to just go off of what you got to say. So let's start off with the uh, defending uh, Eastern Conference champions. 
Oh, the Heat, yeah. Bro. Swept. Bro. To be the only team to be swept in the first round was very heartbreaking. But at the same time, they played so shit. After the third game, my mind state was... Yo, when they lost You're either going to be the first team to come back from a 3-0 deficit, or you better get fucking swept. I don't want no in-between. Oh, uh, when they lost game three, I knew they were... Because the way they yeah. lost game three? Yeah, yeah. I'm Bro, games two and three were huge blowouts. And then game four, you had a 14, 13-point lead in the third? I remember double digit. I don't know the specifics. And Giannis is a fucking pimp for what he said after the game. What did he say? There's a saying, uh, don't play with your food. We didn't want to play with our food. That's like the most savage thing I've ever heard him say because he's usually such a like... I can't believe he said that because he's normally very... Right, like very humble and like... I think there was a lot of like... Because of last year. Yeah. Yeah, so they just wanted to, they, they wanted to make a statement. Bro, listen to this. I knew we were fucked. Do you remember that, that one um, sequence when uh, Giannis fell and who was that dude that fell on him? Oh, and then, and then pushed off? Yes. When Giannis' reaction was that, like just mm, like no anger or nothing, I knew we were fucked. I was like, these dudes are so locked in on both ends that they're not letting anything like minor distractions the heat coming down and like the pettiness and the tomfoolery they're just like nah we're here to do a job you know what that reminded me of that reminded me of a kobe michael jordan moment where when kobe was locked in no matter what you said to him okay you could talk all the shit you yeah. want my play is going to back yeah. it up there was uh, another one by this point that the series was cooked but it was in the fourth game i believe it was like third or fourth quarter when the the bucks started to make a comeback uh, and I think they had taken the lead already. Dragic and Middleton got tangled up, and and Dragic stood up and like put his put his nuts in his face. And Jan and and uh, Middleton just walked away, just like laughing, like nope, nope. And I was like, bro, we are so fucked. Yeah. They were, Even if we come back and win this game, like we're so fucked. These they, these dudes are not phased by any of the bullshit the Heat are throwing at them. They were trying to act like the bad boy Pistons to get under their skin, and it wasn't. Yeah, working. which I which I hated because I'm like, you know how uh, like I'll ride and die with the Heat, but I'm like, that's that's just not how you do it. You're getting outclassed in every single statistic. I'm glad you said that. It's sad because the Heat are actually one of the classiest organizations. Yeah, but it just. It was a bad way to go out. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't too, like, it was nothing crazy. Like, it's not like they were playing dirty. Like, that dirty uh, uh, fucking push-off. Trevor Ariza. Oh, I didn't like yeah. that because it seemed like like there's no need for that. But it wasn't nothing crazy. And then the Dragic thing, that was just anger. So, I, it was nothing crazy, but it was still, I was like, bro, you, you can't be this angry, tough guy when you're down after having a lead and you're getting swept after... Jimmy said, I'm stupidly locked in. Like, I hope that next year's playoffs, I, I want no talking. No, If they ask me about the playoffs, I'm just, I just want them to be like, next question. Don't talk. Let the game do the talking because this year you talk too much. Well, my it thing didn't is, translate to shit. I've, been, I've gotten really into the UFC over the past year. And for me, I just don't understand why you would even put, put that burden on you, bro. You would be surprised how many people talk so much shit. I'm talking about guarantees. Yeah. I'm going guarantee I'm going to knock him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, they're bro. normally the ones who get knocked out. Why do we think Lonzo Ball is considered a bust in the media's eyes? Because his dad hyped him up to be this... Ne- the, even the whole Lakers organization hyped him up to be this... I remember uh, Magic Johnson saying, save some records for me. As in, you're going to break all these records and you're going to shut... Bro, you put that kind of expectation on someone, no matter what they do. This is why LeBron shouldn't have named this kid LeBron James Jr. Bro, this dude could be the next coming of Jesus, and he'll always be compared to LeBron James Sr. I think that has... People don't really... See, that's where people underestimate LeBron has an ego, bro. Oh, he definitely has an ego, but bro, I was looking at this uh, this uh, visual stat the other day, and I don't remember what it was, but it just it really put into perspective what LeBron, like, w- regardless of how you feel about him as a player, as a person, or whatever, like, Respect he is not appreciated enough. As much as he is, I feel like he's still not appreciated enough. Well, you know why? A segue in, because... What player has ever come into the league with as much expectation and hype as him? Not even Zion. Yeah, yeah. 
and delivered. Not only delivered, like exceeded expectations. Bro, hypothetically, he might end top, what, what is it, top 20 rebounds, top 10 steals and assists, and then most points ever. And the thing is, he does it so casually. Because he's not, like, dominant in the sense of, like, he's not, like, uh, yo, like, he, when Curry goes off on scoring, like, you can see, like, okay, he's just hitting his shots or whatever. When LeBron does it, it just seems like, like, he's having a decent game. And then by the end, the time the game ends, you're looking at the stats, you're like, how the fuck? Or a better way to put it, when Russell Westbrook gets a triple-double, he did everything to get it. When yeah. LeBron does and it. And you can see that there's effort being put into it. With LeBron James, it seems like a, like a cas- like the most casual triple-double. What player do you know for his career is going to average over 25 points, over 7 assists, and over 7 rebounds? And they weren't... Let's be real, bro. If LeBron played in-game like a Kobe or Michael Jordan, could you imagine all three of those stats for his career? Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. I, I believe LeBron could have been the first player ever to average a triple-double. Because he is such a freak, and I think he can, or he could have, but that's not what that that wasn't his game, right? Like because his, he he's not a individual person, right? He's he's always been about the team, which I I think he got a lot of wise, flack for stat wise, but he, but he got a lot of flack for that, and I think that's probably that's part of what made him great that he wasn't a individual. Like I'm I'm chasing all these like single or or individual accolades. Yeah, I'm all about the winning, obviously. There's some selfishness to, to to some of his uh, accolades, but I mean you have to to be great. Now, since we're talking about LeBron, let's just segue and get it out of the way since both of our teams lost in the first round. Now, at least with the Lakers, we can blame the injury-prone ass Anthony Davis because everybody wants to forget this. The Lakers had a two-one lead and they were leading in Game Four until Anthony Davis went down. Bro, the 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 Anthony Davis, bro. There's a reason he What was the first thing I said when they lost that series? There's a reason why Anthony Davis signed that contract. When oh, it wasn't yeah, yeah. full value. Yeah, Cuz yeah, yeah. if he waited, he technically could have gotten max contract. Yeah. There's a reason why Oladipo should have taken his off from the Rockets. <laughs> in yeah. retrospect. Yeah. But in retrospect, the Rockets should have traded Ben Simmons to I mean, traded hard into Philly. Yeah. Yeah. But, yo, Philly right now has to be like, all the talk now is of what, what happens with Ben Simmons now. But, bro, you know what? You got to blow that up. <laughs> but, bro, e- even if they get rid of Ben Simmons, which they're going to get rid of, dude. Does he you, have any value? Not only What can that, you get from him anymore? He's a max contract. And then your only star now is injury prone. And I know this is an excuse. The reason why the Sixers lost and Bede was playing with a torn, what was it, MCL? MCL. Grade two, I believe. Or yes. is that James Harden? But he, he even then, he still averaged like 32 and like 10 or some shit like that. But just imagine if he wasn't injured. Yeah. Yeah. So you have Ben Simmons who doesn't... Ben Simmons is a what-if player in terms of what Bro, if he had motivation. You want to hear a crazy stat? Oh, Udonis uh, Haslam played three minutes in the season, right? In the fourth quarter, right? Yeah, in, in, in the entire series. Against Atlanta. Against Atlanta. Just in fourth quarters, if you add all the fourth quarter totals, Udonis Haslam, uh, Haslam attempted more, sh- more field goals. The than entire ben court. Sim- just not threes. The entire court. Just the entire court. Then Ben Simmons did field goals in all the fourth quarters together in that series. Wow, that's uh, uh, did that's you, your number two option supposedly. Did did you see the stat that uh, average? I think in the series he averaged only like nine points. No, no, no. Where for the fourth quarter, Ben Simmons did not miss a, a three point shot. Oh damn, that's elite. <laughs> because he was zero for zero. That's elite. Just don't take the second part. No, bro. People like Ben Simmons really pisses me off because, bro. You don't realize how fortunate you are from a physical perspective. Remember when we used to think he was the next best thing to, it, that no, was going to happen? I never said that. Well, okay. I, I believed it to a certain degree. and I used to, and I, The next LeBron James. That was, not, I, I, I thought the next LeBron. I don't think we're going to get the next LeBron James for a long time. That's but he was the next saying. closest thing in terms of like his play style if he developed a jump shot because of like... 
the the defense. Hit, Defense Size Yeah size passing. Yeah 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 And all that We're like okay He could be the closest thing To LeBron James Without being the next LeBron James Boy were we all wrong well, Holy we, fuck Well you guys were wrong Because You didn't look at The mental bro What, what well, made Because it was It was year one So no he, We hadn't We didn't have enough proof We just looked at What he could be If it developed and I think it could have been right. Like if 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 he had developed some kind of a jump shot, and he wasn't mentally such a weak little bitch. I don't even think he's mentally weak. I think he. Oh, he's mentally weak, bro. He let the talk get to him. I think he sees the talk about <coughs> him coming up short and how the series and how the, the 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 that Sixers team will ride and die by Ben Simmons, which I think is more. Uh, uh, and beat than Simmons, but and Sim- uh, Simmons is definitely like the close second. Yeah, uh, bro, what do you do with that? Well, team? he might be mentally weak, but I still think he cares more about what comes with the fame than his actual job. Oh uh, yeah, bro, well, contract Ben Simmons is going to be interesting to watch. You know, like you ever listen to old NBA heads and why they hate the young NBA players because bro, they're just haters. <laughs> no, 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 but. People like Charles Barkley, they have a point. Because b- before the 2000s, before Michael Jordan, if you played in the NBA, you played because you loved the game, not necessarily for the money. Because if you were lucky, you were making $2 million a year. Which, yes, compared to the average person, you're rich. But you're not super rich. You're, you're not generational wealthy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Now, I feel... Or another way to put it, back then... Players were more likely to enter the NBA for the love of the game than for the money and the fame. Yeah. Now, how many players truly enter the NBA for the love of the game? I agree. 25%? I agree. If that? Bro, but like, look at Ben Simmons' set gener- generational money averaging nine points in the playoffs. And not even as a rookie. Bro, have you seen the stats on Ben Simmons year after year? Oh, it's actually gotten worse. He's declined every year. Bro, this might be his last max contract. He might only be a role player after this, like one of those like defensive uh, specialist players. But he's going to be the richest role player of all time. Yeah, in, uh, in terms of like when it's all said and done, probably. But yeah. Bro, I, I, unless he has a crazy improvement in the next couple of years, I, I, I'm, I'm so intrigued to what happen. his next contract is going to be. You know why? He, he's the East version of Andrew Wiggins, bro. They have all the physical talent, but they don't have the will to maximize what they were born with. I, but I would argue that Wiggins has more raw talent than Simmons. I think Ben Simmons has the physical attributes. <laughs> But he doesn't have the skill. But you have the resources to get the skill because his major, his biggest flaw is his shooting. Which is, the and I feel like that's thing. the easiest thing to get. You can't really teach defense pa- or, or like passing. drill it. Yeah, or passing. But the, 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 you got no shot. Like to say a broken shot is one thing, but like no shot. But the reason why I, the reason why I'm not, I, I'm not, I don't feel that's a big deal. Look at Lonzo, bro. Lonzo. Had a broken shot. Bro, his shot looks amazing. But, but bro, it took him truly, what, two years to really flip it? If, but this is the thing, the difference. Lonzo has a love for the game. He was raised in the game, the process. Born a ball. And, yo, unlike Simmons, every single year, Lonzo has gotten better. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, bro. What do you do with that team? But do, what do you do with Doc Rivers? Bro, I always said this. He was the most overrated coach. Yeah. And if you didn't agree with it before, how do you dispute it now? I want you to tell me how that's not the most disappointing, the uh, more disappointing team than the Jazz. Bro, I'm so sick of the Clippers. Dude, I just want to point this out. For the second straight year, if the Mavericks had a Porzingis that wasn't injured and wasn't acting like a bum, they beat the Clippers. Dude, you know what happened in Game 7? Luka scored, what was it, 44 or 47 points? I don't remember, but he, he went off it, it was, every fucking game. It even, was, even in the losses. <laughs> bro, in Game 7, he had 40-plus points. He had 14 uh, rebounds. And Porzingis, who is a max player, didn't even score double digits. 
Yeah, he's he he's definitely on the trading block. He has to be. I that that series really pissed me off. Where the first six games, the away team won. Bro, down o two Kawhi Leonard is absolutely the most dangerous player in the fucking league. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. To be fair, the Mavericks don't play defense. I don't give a fuck. He's been down o two. In the in every series in the past few years that he's been down 0-2, they, they win the series. They win the series. Yeah. Now to be fair, since he is LeBron James game <laughs> six against Boston. Oh, since we're on this, let's talk about round two: the Clippers versus the Utah Jazz. Bro, seriously, because we wanted to get into this. Who do you blame when you're the number one seed? You win the first two games, then you lose four straight. And two of those straight games was without Kawhi Leonard on the opposing team. Oh, is there even an excuse? No, that, and, but that's what I'm saying. But when we were talking about this the last couple of days and you said Donovan Mitchell takes all the blame. You remember when Shaq came out on, on live broadcast news or live broadcast television and said sh- straight up to Donovan Mitchell, you're not a superstar? Yeah. I agree with Shaq now. How? Donovan Mitchell versus the Clippers averaged 34.8 points, which led both teams. Yeah, I know. 5.3 assists, which also led both teams. That that says more about the other players than him. Five rebounds, which was third in his team. That says more about everybody else. Led the team in field goals made and attempted. 44.5%, 44.5%, which is a crazy... For a postseason, yes. Yes. And for that many attempts. I, I, I didn't fucking write down how many. I just... <laughs> led the team in three-point field goals made and attempted. 45%, which was second highest in his team. I'm, I'm assuming behind Joe Engels. Led the team in free throws made and assists. <laughs> led both teams in assists. Was third in rebounds for his team. Mm-hmm. And was tied for first in steals. Okay. That, okay. He is the team. Okay. So I I, I didn't I never pointed this out, but I was pointing this out to other people. Remove Donovan Mitchell. Remove the Utah Jazz. But the same exact situation. Just not this year. Last year. You place LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers his first stint, right? Right. If LeBron James had a 3-1 nothing lead, I mean a 3-1 lead last year and lost three straight to lose the series, and then the very next year comes in with the number one seed, has a 2-0 lead, and then loses four straight games, including one game at home, and two of those games is without the best player on the opposing team, who's getting the blame The past two years. But that's what I'm saying. How can he get the blame when he... It's not even... Like, he did everything he could. Can you answer the question? Conley didn't play. No. Can you answer the question? Ask the question again. Who's getting the blame for those past two years? LeBron James. So why is LeBron James held to a different standard? Every... Yo, bro. No, no. I agree. LeBron James is held to a standard that is, is just unfair. Bro, what was every sports channel... Bleacher Report, Sports Center, ESPN, Fox Sports saying about Donovan Mitchell after the first round. Is he the best player in Utah Jazz history? Is he the best under 25 year old player in the NBA? There was legit. But who, who, who if not him, at least in the postseason? Bro, stats? <coughs> Luca? Because Luke, you can make a, a fair case for Luca. I want to be clear here. I was You're at least top three. Okay, you know me, bro. Uh huh. Since day one, coming out of college, who did I say was the rookie of the year of that class? Not Ben Simmons, Donovan Mitchell. Who have I been saying is a freaking assassin? Donovan Mitchell. He's got that killer instinct. He can close. But it, it, dude, I just don't see Kobe going out. Back to back postseasons like this, and, but and I don't think that that's <coughs> fair to put on him. But it's, I mean, you 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 have to put some of it on him. But to say he <coughs> is not their most impactful player, I just bro, he leads the team in everything. 
I, I guess what it is, bro. He, not only that, look at his help. His his second, bro. He had the best three point shooting team in NBA history. He had one of the best defensive teams in 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 this entire league. But if you just look at his individual stats, it's not on him. But you just pointed to Trey Young. Individual stats don't mean anything. And bro, he has been bounced in the first round three of his five seasons, and he's never gotten out of the second round. You, you just mentioned this about Luca. You, you're saying, oh, this is this is Trey Young. This is only two rounds. What is Donovan Mitchell doing? Technically speaking, and by the way, Donovan Mitchell is one of the rare players. He gets better in the postseason. But he gets better statistically. Like if Kobe Bryant I'm I hold Donovan Mitchell up to a high standard. Yeah. I think he I legit think he is Dwayne Wade with a shot. With a three point shot. Yes. Yes. That's what and, I've been calling him too. And Dwayne And that Wade, might be why I defend him like that, because the Wayne D Wade is my favorite player and I see like the comparison. Yeah, but my thing is Dwayne Wade is legit what top ten shooting guard of all time? Yeah. Well top three. Bro, it's Michael, Kobe, and Wade. I would say top five. Who are you putting? I, I would need to go because uh, we disrespect the old timers. I would have to go through the list. I'm saying, without a doubt, top 10, I would make the case top five. Injuries is what fucked up his debate for top three. Okay, I believe it's top three, and pretty much any person I've seen throughout history debate their, their, their top three is, for the most part, D Wade is. I think widely accepted as top three. Okay, okay. well, uh, that's that's a better point. Top three. Donovan Mitchell is Dwayne Wade because he plays defense with a shot, right? Right. The other two players ahead of Dwayne Wade, Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, they I just don't see them allowing back-to-back postseasons like this. And yes, Kobe Bryant had a situation in the postseason where he his team was up 3-1 to one and he lost in seven games against the Suns. But the key difference, the Suns were the number one seed. The Lakers were a number eight seed. Okay, without diving too deep into actual statistics because I don't know enough about that era, Michael Jordan was did not succeed in the playoffs until he had Pippen. So what if... But the, oh, what if... Donovan Mitchell just doesn't have the right help yet. Can you imagine Donovan Mitchell with the right number two guy? But, bro, in every s- comparable situation where you compare it to Kobe and and Michael where they lost in similar fashion, they had the worst teams. No, I agree. Like, last year against the Nuggets, you can make the case, besides that one injury, the Jazz were as talented, if not more talented, than the Nuggets. Look at what the Nuggets did this year. No, no, and I agree, but... Regardless, I think it's more on the team than on him. Because, again, I just gave you the stats. So, so is, what, is, what could is, he do better? So is it coaching then? It could be coaching. Because I can't tell you. I, I can I, What I can say, though, is there's just, just, just no way that to look at at these stats and say, like, like, you tell me, what, what can he do better? Bro, I'm a Donovan Mitchell fan, but what do we always say about the greatest of the great? They have that it factor. And it's just not clutchness. But sometimes that it factor like requires more. Like LeBron James is that it factor. And without the right help, LeBron even LeBron James can't do it. Yeah, but bro, I just maybe it's my bias. D Wade without Shaq, without LeBron, as bro, great as he has been. You, you has know, he done it alone? You know what it is, bro? Ty Lue is gonna get all the credit now. And I think he is the most over... I don't think he's going to get any other credit. I hope. I hope you're wrong. Have you been watching the, the, the sports shows, bro? They're, they're, they're calling Ty Lue. Oh, the, like the play calling? Yeah, or, yeah. He, he's a play calling genius. Oh, my God. And, bro, I, you, bro, I think those are just talking heads. I, I think you know I what's agree. So cring- you know what's so cringeworthy? You know what was one of the first things Ty Lue said after he won the series? Mm-hmm. And it became official when every, round two was complete? He said, there's a reason why three out of the four coaches are non-minority. I'm like, what? Like, like, what does that have to do with anything? Yeah, I think that's just to get people talking. But, bro, straight up, he might be the, the worst coach <laughs> in the league right now. 
No, hold on. Sacramento still has uh Luke. Yeah, yeah. I used to be a fan of him, but bro, because he looked good when he was with the Lakers. With the, no, with the Warriors, with the Lakers, he was horrible. No, no, he was developing the talent. F- no, no, nah, I will, I will die on this hill. He was a horrible coach <laughs> on the Lakers. I know LeBron James was injured that year, but that's his first. No, I'm not, I'm not talking. I'm talking about the two years prior. I'm not talking about that. That was a bad year. I'm saying when he was developing the talent, the first two years. He was developing. I forgot how long he had been there, to be honest. <laughs> it just seems like the one year when LeBron James was there. I'm like, you had him for one year and you fucked that up? How do you fuck? No, bro, listen. He looked so great on the Warriors when he was the assistant coach. And everybody thought he might be like this next prodigy because they won like 17 games or 11 games in a row when he was interim coach when uh, when uh, nah, nah, when Steve Kerr was out. But I'm like, bro. I've never coached even like the YMCA Little League team. You know, I could have coached that team to eleven in a row. Yo, can we talk about that for a second, real quick? Just look, random ass segue. I didn't see that shit coming, I and did. I want to know why. Bec- when you lose back to back first round series to the Clippers, when you should have won, that's why. Nah, no, nah, bro, nah. That, I think. I'm thinking it might have just been the. I've, I've I've seen the rumors that apparently like him and and Luca weren't exactly on, on good terms. So he probably started realizing that Luca is who they're going to prioritize, the organization, I mean. So he's probably like, no, nah, Why wouldn't Luca like him? I don't know. I just know, uh, from what I heard, that there they, they were, like, clashes. And Rick Carlisle is the reason why Luca is what Luca is right now. Right. But clearly, if you look at what the organization is doing, everything is, and rightfully so, being based around Luca. Because he is your future, so you you got it, and it's a players' league these days, right? So like, it's so it was gonna happen regardless. So I think that he might he probably saw that. I was like, no, fuck that. I don't like. I don't necessarily really like this player. Uh, the organization seems to be heading in a direction where they're gonna prioritize him, and I'm still good enough. And 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 there are teams with vacancies with stars that I can coach and still make a name for myself. Yo, he could take over Boston, and 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 take Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. Mm. And be great. He could take Portland. Be I'll, great. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go to Portland, bro. But Zion, you can <laughs> you can take over. Uh, 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 I think Doc Rivers is probably on the hot seat. I don't think he gets fired yet, but he's on the hot seat. You could take <laughs> over a young uh, uh, Indiana team. You, there's no superstar there, but I think you go there and you you, you could probably. Uh, I was Yo, say how that. does Indiana look right now? With them firing McMillan. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bro, first of all, he shouldn't have been fired last year after that heat. You were missing Oladipo and Sabonis. What the fuck did you think was going to happen? You know what McMillan was? He he was this generation's version of Tom Thibodeau, where Tom Thibodeau never had a healthy squad besides that one year, and he still somehow won nearly 50 games and got them to the postseason and lost in six, seven games in the first round. This firing remind at that firing reminded me of when Scott Brooks lost his job at uh OKC. at OKC the season they missed the playoffs when Durant and Harden were were injured. No, uh, when Durant because Harden was already traded, he was with Rockets. You sure? I'm positive. Okay. Well. Yeah, it was like, well, what the fuck? Did, in, in, in the West. And they barely missed the playoffs. In retrospect, right? Like, in hindsight, you look at Scott Brooks, and it's like, okay, he's not a great coach. But <laughs> at the time, he looked like a great coach. And at the time, it was like, why the fuck did he just get the the bad end of this of this loss? Yeah, Nate McMillan took a 14-21 and 21 One. team. Yeah. Into the Eastern Conference play. against good teams. I mean, the Knicks. I don't think we're a bad team. They're not ready. But then they w- went in five, seven, oh five. Yeah, five, five. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah, they won. I, they I won. had them. I had them winning. I but, had the Knicks winning because I did, I thought playoff basketball. Yeah, comes back to a, slows down to a crawl. Defense matters, and they were like top five in defense. Yo, they and were, I, they and were I, number two. Yeah, and I thought defense was ultimately gonna outweigh offense. And I thought if the Hawks, for some reason, don't hit their shots, the Knicks' defense will be will, will carry them. Oh, bro, can I just say this real quick? <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. No. I have been wrong about every fucking series these playoffs, and the only one I've been right about, and I'm so glad I was right about it, was the Nets not beating uh, the Bucks. I was only right about two series. Wait, which one? The Bucks being the Nets, and then the Suns beating the Denver Nuggets. 
I didn't, I didn't see Bro, the sweep. I didn't sweep. What the fuck was that? Yo, once you can't even blame Jamal Murray not being there because like they've been fine without him. Bro, Chris Paul had a postseason game where he had 15 assists and one turnover. Which one was the game where Chris Paul put up like 37 points? Was it game four in, in the Nugget series or is it game seven, game six? No, it was Le- LeBron James game, right? LeBron James here? Yeah. Where he, and, and most of the points was in the fourth quarter? Yeah. Holy fuck. Bro, I, I di- see, this is why, dude, you know, I, I've come around about this. I don't give a fuck about championships, bro. I really don't. Bro, he might go down as the best point card of all time. No, he's never going to be ahead of Magic. I don't know, bro. Bro, he's never going, just because he's he's not the best point guard of all time. For his size, if if we're doing... But I mean, Magic Johnson was too big for his size. No, no, but I'm saying if we're doing a pound for pound, like fighting, uh-huh. you can make the case. But if we're saying we're taking the person as is... You're never going to pick Chris Paul over Magic Johnson just because he's legit a center who's a point guard. Bro, I don't know. I think he's got a good argument. Whether you end up agreeing with it or not, the fact that you can make the argument is 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 impressive enough. I don't even think he's top three, bro. You, you bro, I see. This is where you need to do your history. This is where people forget history. Isaiah Thomas grew up in a time with the Boston Celtics with Larry Bird. With Michael Jordan of Chicago. With the Indiana Pacers. Bro, but just talking about what the point guard position is. And like as a true, true point guard. We need to stop having this because you're you're not. His assist to turnover ratio is just fucking beautiful. Holy shit. How many like 11, 12 assists and zero turnover games has he had? That's Every time I see that, I fucking come in my pants a little bit. Because that's what a true point guard is. Yeah. That's why Westbrook's, as much as I love Westbrook, his triple-doubles from an assist perspective are overrated because normally those triple-double games come with four or five turnovers. Yeah. That's why I never respected James Harden. Plus, he's like a hybrid point. He's like a Steph Curry where, like, yo, if you're averaging more points or at that many more points than than assists, I guess because he averages a triple-double, but like like a Curry, right? Being a point guard, we're like, yo, if you look at his He's a shooting guard. Yeah. He's, he's only considered a point guard because of, of his size. size. Yeah, I missed the time just five years ago, let alone 20 years ago, when teams actually play defense. Yeah. Bro, did you, did you notice this? Okay, there was three straight nights where a team had a 17-plus point lead at least midway through the third quarter or later and ended up losing the game. Was Philly not two of those? No, no, one of them was... Well, Philly had a 26-point lead going, in, going against in. Against Atlanta and yeah. lost. Yeah. The, that was the second night. The first night was the Bucks against the Nets. When, when Yeah, they were up 17 at the half. 17 in the middle of the third. Oh, shit. And they lost when KD had that historic playoff night. Yeah, he and put then, up like 49, a 49-point <laughs> triple-double. And then the third night was when the Utah Jazz in Game 6 had that 24-point lead. Against the Clippers. And they lost. Yeah. Honestly speaking, bro. Honestly, even on paper, the Hawks weren't as good as the Sixers. This is what's so incredible about this. Let me just really quick, really quick, because I have it written down and I want to get through this, right? Okay. Why the Sixers lost is so bad. (laughs) Okay. They lost. First of all, they're the number one seed. They lost to a fifth-seeded Hawks team that people were split. No, the Sixers were number one? Yes. And they lost to a fifth seed Hawks team that people and experts were split on if they were even going to come out of the first round, right? Because if you've seen everybody you talk to, they're like, it's the Knicks or Hawks, and it was very evenly. To be, I mean, they had the same record. To be fair, though, ever since Nate McMillan, they had the best record in the Eastern Conference. Right. No, it, I think in the league, actually. I, that's what I thought, but I didn't want to say that yeah. without 100% knowing. Okay, but here's the thing. So, the Sixers lost to a fifth seeded Hawks team who... Average less points than them in the series. This is all like series stats, right? The, the Sixers averaged 110.7 points per game in the series. The Hawks averaged 107. So you somehow averaged less points, and you still won the series. You averaged less rebounds, 44, uh, more rebounds than the Hawks team, 44.6 to 42.3. They averaged less assists, the Hawks did, 
They averaged less steals, less blocks, a lower shooting percentage, a lower three-point shooting percentage. All while the Sixers had three players who averaged <coughs> 30, 21, and 19, and that's Embiid, Curry, and, 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 and Harris. Bro, every major statistical category, they were worse than the Sixers in. The Hawks. The Hawks. Were worse. And they still won. So what does that tell me? They can't close. Because okay. if you scored more points, out-rebounded, out-assist, and shoot better than the other team, and you still lose the game... You probably had leads in most of those games, which I think they did, and you still lose. You just can't close games. Okay. That is a horrible loss. Yo, first of all, Paul George has had an amazing fucking postseason. Playoff P is real this year. No, only in this round. He he was up and down against Dallas. That, but we're getting away Yo, from- but like he did up and down with Kawhi healthy. Kawhi stepped out and he could have easily folded and be like, well, you know, I did. You could have had the excuse at least to be like, well, now I'm on my own. He stepped up. So props to playoff P. That it that just more so proves what I always assumed. He he is awesome by himself. He can't play with a star. That Damn, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> no, it's very debatable. Because, right. Because think about right. OKC, bro. Yeah, because some players can't do it alone. And to say he can't do it being a, a, a beta might just prove that he is an alpha. Yeah, but it's... Bro, let's 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 ship Paul George to a lesser team and give him a beta as opposed to an alpha well, and that's see what he can do with it with them. The Pacers. Right. No, but with like a really good coach on an up and coming like let's Do you think and this is out of nowhere, I just popped up in my head. If he went to Boston, do you think he'd be the number one option? Or was that would you think Jason Tatum at at this point of his career would still be the number one option? That might be a fair question, actually. I don't think it would work with their with, with, style with Brown and Tatum. No, I agree. But just just Tatum and Paul George. Let's say you hypothetically swap Brown for Tatum, for George. I don't. Th- I don't think it would work. I don't think it would. No, work. no. Whether it would work or not, <laughs> just who would you say is the number one option there? If it was just those two, th- those are your two leading guys. I think. Tatum would be the beta just because every place George has gone, he's been the less experienced player. Westbrook was more experienced than he was. That's a good point. Kawhi, postseason wise, more experienced than he is. That's so a, it's almost like point. he he mentally fucks himself to where he thinks he has to be the beta. Because he should be an alpha. If this series has proven anything. Well, and then you look back at the Pacers. Well, look Shit. look at what he did with OKC that one year when Westbrook was in and out of the lineup. That was when he was posting his best stats of his career, points and three-point shooting. Damn, if only we were, like, big on and, and, like, nationally televised. Can you imagine? Yo, Paul George, leave Kawhi and be the man again. You know what I think the Clippers should do, bro? That needs to be the title of this show. They need to get rid of Kawhi, dude. All right, the parentheses title of this show, you need to put Paul George... Trade Kawhi. Is an alpha. <coughs> Trade Kawhi. Trade Ka- Yo, Kawhi might just leave if they lose. No, no. no. Not, I think not now. If they would have lost in the second round, I think he might have. No, he wouldn't because he got injured. You, you can't go out that way. No, we're, we're going so many places here. I just really quick. <laughs> okay, let me just quickly say this so I could get back to my point. Okay. Kawhi was never the alpha on any team he was on. Even the Raptors. Lowry was the alpha for that team. Oh, Okay. In terms of personality, yeah, I'm, I'm, it, it, well, yeah, he's just not an alpha in, per, in personality. But I think in in in, in performance, he, he is. Yeah, but but just because performance, you still the the problem why he, the the he's relationship a quiet leader. He he's not he's not a leader at all. The reason why his relationship with Paul George doesn't work because Paul George naturally is too kind, so he allows the more experienced player to be the alpha. But Kawhi is not an alpha. Paul George, people, the yeah, Indiana Pacers. Is he really more experienced? I would say they're pretty close in experience. It's just one is more, <laughs> more accomplished. Yeah, but people relate accomplishment with experience. No, I know. And because he's actually been in the finals and won championships. But in terms of <laughs> actual experience, they, they might be neck and neck. No, I agree with you. But Paul George and the Clippers don't view it that way. No, I know. And, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, and and and, and it's hard to argue, right? Because like one has two titles, 
Yeah, but he wasn't the reason. Dude, it was the funniest thing where they were they were going through all these players won finals MVP because they defended LeBron James. And they showed Iggy and then Kawhi stats. And LeBron James in both of those series basically averaged a triple-double. Yeah, he cooked everybody. <laughs> but they were still holding LeBron James to lower than... Yeah, yeah. Yo, Iggy won at finals MVP for stopping LeBron James. And, and, he, he, and he led both teams in everything. <laughs> Damn near averaged a 30-point triple-double. And he didn't actually average a 30-point triple-double. No, but it was basically a 30-point triple-double. Yeah. <laughs> okay, getting back to my point. The reason why the Jazz is more uh, disappointing, Kawhi was injured. And they were exposed, bro. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert, the defensive player of the year. Oh, he, first of all, he's a fake defensive player of the year. I'm not saying he's bad on defense, but he's getting cooked by anybody not a center. You remember when he signed that max $200 million contract? Yeah. What did I text you? Bad decision. Oh, absolutely. Bro, when you are only effective three feet from the, from the rim, and- how are you defensive player of the year? First of all... I think Bam should have been higher than he was. He got third, I believe. Third? Yeah, because Draymond was second. I don't know how the fuck Draymond was second. Not to say Draymond isn't a good defender overall, but this year? Draymond over Bam? Did, were you watching Draymond, though? Over Bam? I, I think it's more dis- disrespectful they put Gobert over both of them. Yeah, oh, absolutely. But it, that's what I'm saying. So we are, it's established that Gobert shouldn't have won it. So then it comes down to Bam and, 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 and Draymond. Oh, that's not the point. The point is, bro, your role is defense. Yeah. And besides... Not just blocks. No, but overall defense. And you can make the case, take away the Connolly injury. He was the reason why the Jazz lost game six. With, with that one player, that unknown player who became a star overnight, was dunking on Gobert, the dude who scored a career high for his... Oh, the rookie. He's a rookie. Yeah, yeah, uh, Man. Terrence Mann, some of yeah, that? Yeah, he scored 36 or 37 points. Yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying, bro. <coughs> I don't think that falls on Donovan. That's on the help. If your second no, no, best I'm player... The Jazz is more disappointing than the six. What I'm trying to say is, bro... I never thought the Sixers were going to make it to the finals, and I wasn't surprised that they didn't make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Right. The moment the Lakers lost, I was putting my money on the Jazz to go to the finals, and I was I was shocked they did not make the the Western Conference Finals. That's why it's more disappointing for me because I had higher expectations for the Jazz. I'm not because this is what I'm trying to say. The 76ers, this is what they are in the postseason. Okay, I agree for the most part. The only thing I disagree on is that the expectations for the Jazz. I thought even though the Sixers are, have been the chokers and this is who they are and they don't make it past, their, their path to the finals this year was, easy. was a cakewalk. Okay, that's they should have swept their way through the finals. Well, at least the first two rounds. Right. Right, right. Because then you had, you would have had to, have to face the, the, Nets the, Bucks, or the Bucks or the Yeah. But when you look at the Jazz, Lakers or not, they had a harder path to the finals. So I always thought that the Jazz, while they could get to the finals, I thought the West, <coughs> even with the Lakers, was a, a free-for-all. Okay. I well, think anybody could have done it. So... Or anybody could do it still, as you know, as with especially as we've been seeing what's, what's been happening. So I'm just so surprised that given the path that they had, how they fell. Just out of who is the better team in your opinion, the Clippers or the Hawks? Obviously the Clippers. I think, but I think that's what it comes down to. But bro, the Clippers, the just- Clippers have title expectations, even though the Jazz did too. <laughs> The Hawks were barely supposed to be a first round team. They were suppo- barely supposed to be a playoff team for the way they started off the season. I think Tyron Lue is so overrated and McMillan is so underrated. Yeah. So that's. I, wh- I agree on that 100%. Or another way to put it, if McMillan was the coach from day one, I think the Hawks would have been the number one seed. Bro, if the Sixers had a, a real good coach, they <laughs> sweep their way through the, through the fucking the first two rounds. 
But this is where I, I was saying I don't know about coaching anymore. Is it really the coaching? Is it the players? I, I, I don't know. What did the Sixers do in the first round? Who did they play again? They played... Who the fuck did they play? I, and I, and I'm like, did they go to seven or four? Who the fuck did they play? What the fuck? It's going to be the most fucking random ass team. Washington. Oh, yeah. Washington. Wow. That, I forgot about Washington. That, that says everything, right? Yeah. You couldn't have had an easier path. Oh, okay, so who who do you think wins this round and then wins the finals ultimately? Bro, the finals, I have no idea. All the teams that are left are such underdogs in, in their own way and have all exceeded expectations in their own way at the same time. Okay, so this is what I hope happens. I hope Suns and Bucks. I, honestly, with the teams that are left, as long as it's not the Clippers, even though I don't really mind the Clippers if they win, because the only Bro. reason I wanted the Clippers to lose was so that Kawhi would leave. I can't have Tyron Lu win back champion. <laughs> to back championships in his first year. No, I can't. I, okay, I agree. I don't I think any, I don't think people will. Get, I think the media will give him the credit, but I think real fans know that that's not on him. But. With that aside, I can't, bro. He's they're they're my least that I want to win. He's the most cocky coach in the NBA, bro. It is so aggravating. Okay, What's they're they're the least I want to win, <laughs> but not you. enough to say I don't want them to win. No, fuck. But that. the rest of the teams all have, and I think I was telling you about this. They all have players or something about them. The that Hawks I, is too early. No, uh, Trey Young is too young. Fuck that. He his. But they yo, but for them, it's a, a little bit <laughs> Trey Young because I've I've earned some respect for him this in these playoffs. Kobe would be proud. Yeah, but I want McMillan to win. I want. Uh, I want uh, who's left in the East. I want Giannis to win. I feel bad for them because they, they remind me of those Raptors teams all those years. They were like so close and they just needed that one year but to finally. This is my thing is I Giannis is still so young and he still has so many options and different pathways to win a chip. I just, I Chris just, Paul, I, know, I, just I feel, feel like this is his. But that's what I'm saying. Like That's why I don't want to put my like my money on any one team that like I really want because there's something likable about all of them. So like I want, I want Giannis likeable to win. about the Clippers? I like Kawhi and Paul George. Kawhi's injured, and can you imagine their ego winning without Kawhi? What we're going to have to hear next year. Oh, they're not winning without Kawhi. But Kawhi's supposed to come back at some point. He has a torn ACL. I, th- I'm, I'm, uh, I don't know, bro. I, I, I haven't heard him being ruled out at all. They haven't even ruled him out for the series. He better not pull up Brandon Roy or his career is over. Okay, so the Clippers, I, Paul George and, and Kawhi, they're like a boy. I, I, mostly Paul George because this, all the slander he's got. I can't stand gotten. their coach and their owner, bro. But I like Paul George. Yeah, it I like Kawhi too, but I like I want Paul George to win. Not more so than the other players. He, they're the least, right? Like as I already said. Okay. I want Chris Paul and Devin Booker to win. I want Jay Crowder to win. Do a ranking. Fourth the first. Fourth the first. Fourth Clippers. Yeah, fourth Clippers. I agree. Third... I put Hawks. Yeah. Because they're so young, they have time. Yeah. And then I'd, uh, I'd say Bucks. Second, I agree. And Suns. And those are close. The I only reason want... why I have the Suns is because they're older in I, terms of their key players. I low-key want somebody from the East to win it. I wouldn't be mad if Giannis. Yo, I love Giannis. Yeah. Dude, Giannis it, it reminds me of he is the most Kobe in terms of he just keeps his head down and he works. He works. He might not have the natural talent or he might not have the natural skills of a Kobe, but he works and he works and yeah. he works. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. even so if it humble. doesn't pay off every time, like, yeah. That's why I was so surprised when he said, uh, there's those saying, don't play with your food. We didn't want to play with our food. I was like, that's like Tim Duncan saying some shit like that. But Can you be, imagine Tim Duncan saying some shit like that? But to be fair, Tim Duncan never got bounced from the playoffs the way the Bucks did last year. I'm just saying, like, I, I, I could never expect, <laughs> like, him trash talking? <clears throat> What's a great saying? Yeah. Imagine Kawhi trash talking. But, but to be fair, how do we not know he wasn't talking about food? He might have had a nice dinner. We don't 100%. No, we know he was trash talking. And that was a savage. Even even not by Giannis comp- uh, standards, that was still a savage thing to say after sweeping a team in their home court. <laughs> that was the post-game interview. On, that's, 
on court post game interview. But is he not right? You never give a team life. No, he was absolutely bro. That's what I'm saying. And you know how much of a fucking Heat fan I am. The Heat 100 percent deserved to get swept, and I'm glad they did. Yeah, it teaches them. No, not only that, the front office, that team better not look anywhere close to this in September. And it won't in October. And on that, we will end this episode. Unless you have something else you want to end it on. We're going to finish with the famous Rhino Thrust. And uh, we're going to do our five things where you like the video, where you subscribe to the channel, and you comment, hit the bell, ring a ding ding. Mm. You share. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and now on Locals, where if you want to support us, it's only $2 a month. And last but not least, you comment about anything we've discussed from the randomness at the beginning of the episode or the NBA playoffs in the middle and the back end. And how long w- has this been? And with that... Wait, how long is this episode so far? One hour and 20. <laughs> she. Shit! <laughs> all right, me and um, my girl's little brother, because he like you know he's young and all that shit. So he does all the time. So now it's become a thing. Every time someone says something like mildly just shocking or even just mm, we just like sheesh. You, and the face that. <coughs> Where is that from though? Because Danielle and and his two girlfriends do that shit all so the time. The this. Yeah. So do you know what it means? No. Appa- okay, so it means ice in your veins, right? And I'm like, when that shit first started, when it when when it became a really like big thing on like right now. I'm assuming TikTok started it. No, you know who was the first person I saw do that? Uh, uh, Russell, uh, the 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 D Russell, fucking what's his name? D'Angelo Russell. Wow, f- f- from f- from Timberwolves. Yeah, he would hit a shot. Ice in his veins. I'm like, oh, it makes sense, right? He started doing that with the Lakers originally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I knew what it was. And then a couple months ago, when I saw someone on TikTok was like, someone new, so young people of TikTok. Someone, like, what does this mean? And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? And then when I saw the comments, I was like, ice in your veins. And I'm like, I did know that. Why but didn't I know? Why isn't Russell getting the credit for that then? Maybe he wasn't the one who started it. Well, I know whoever started it is not getting the credit because no, I, I I've seen that it was started a lot in, in college basketball. A lot of college basketball players were doing it. But, bro, Russell has been in the league for a long time now. Yeah. Yeah, so apparently, sheesh. <laughs> but now it's just funny to say whenever someone says anything, I'm just like, sheesh. <coughs> and then the face, you know. The, have you seen that face before? Yeah. Yeah. Women do that shit all the time. I see guys do it. When they're, like, fake hitting on someone. <laughs> that is. Yo, yo, are you coming over? <laughs> yo, TikTok, I'm not going to lie. You know what's so Shit is cocaine in a social media app. <laughs> shit is addictive as fuck. I only go on that shit like once a week because I already know if I plan on being productive, do not open TikTok. <laughs> Yo, that's that's me for Instagram. Yo, bro, I don't... Who needs porn, bro? Why do you need porn when there's Instagram? Yo, especially have you... There's no nudity on this. Have you seen that TikTok trend where where they're saying uh, uh, thin waist, pretty face, and... A big booty, yeah, and yeah, bro. <laughs> oh. Yo, TikTok is wild for that shit. What's crazy is they're all like definitely underage. Like all I know is my daughter ain't having TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <nah. coughs> Hell no. Nah. Yo, well, the problem with TikTok and Instagram is just most of those women don't even look like that in person. They use so many filters and stuff. Yeah, the right angles. They all got the ring light in front of their fucking tripods. And yeah, shit. it's just... Oh. Okay, with that being said, LLPH and... Kadoodle. Hey. Just a friendly reminder, guys. Hit the subscribe button in this corner. And then for the newest video... Then for the most recommended, and then for our famous dick pic.